Hello everybody, I'm Michael and I want you to welcome to the first episode of the Wings W Workshop. Well, some of you guys may already have known me from a YouTube video from the 3D Bros, which was recorded at our local airfield, which we did some test flights with the Wings W. After this YouTube video, I decided to make a Wings W workshop to make all of you to Wings W experts. The Wings W workshop is separated into three parts. The first part is a little introduction of the Wings W, and the second and the third part is about the software configurations. At this presentation, we talk about five different points. First point why should I use a Wings W? Second point, we talk about the key features of the Wings W. Third point, we have a product overview of the Wings W, which hardware types there are. Fourth point, we talk about the differences of the Wings W Easy Control and the Wings W Classic. And the fifth point, we do have an overview of the flight control basics. Why should I use a Wings W? Well, Every model aviator loves to fly when it's no wind, but there are still some other negative influences like the torque of your engine. So what does your wing stubby do? It helps to eliminate wind and other turbulences. You won't need aerobatic mixers anymore and there's no dumping over the wing caused by a stall. And also no breakout anymore in case of start or after landing. That means with Wings W your model flies as it should. And that's a great advantage. But notice, your model does not fly by itself. It's no autopilot. If you want to fly a four point roll or a turn, just go on like you used to do. Let's have a look to the key features of the Wings W. The Wings W is a free axis gyro system for all wing models. You can use it for all common SC systems. That means don't matter if you use Hart, Futaba, Spectrum, M-Link, GT or Hi-Tech, it works with all of these systems. You can do the installation of your Wings W in multiple positions. It's optionally available with a 35 ampere battery switch. You can also optionally programmable your Wings W by PC or app. There are different software versions, the Wings W Easy Control and the Classic version. And it's really adjustable flight and control phases. And it's also fully updatable. That means if there's an update one year or two year in the future, you can update your Wings W for free. Let's have a look to the different hardware types of the Wings W. The first hardware type is the Wings W with 7 or 9 channels. With this type you will need an external receiver with a serial servo signal. This type is compatible with all of the listed manufacturers. The second type is the Wings W RX7 or RX9. This Wings W, compared to the first type, has a fully integrated M-Link receiver. The third type of the Wings W is the Wings W 12 16 Pro. This type has an integrated battery switch with a current up to 35 amperes. You also will need an external receiver and it's also compatible with all of the listed manufacturers. The last type of the Wings W is the Wings W RX 12 16 Pro. That means you also have an integrated battery switch and you have an integrated Amblink receiver. Independent which hardware type you use, you can freely selectable between your Wingstub Easy Control or Wingstub Classic software. Let's talk about the differences between the Wings W Easy Control version and the Classic version, so that everybody can decide which his favorite version is. With the use of the Easy Control, you do your normal programming of your model by the transmitter. That means servo, 
0 points, 0 endpoints is all done by your transmitter like you did it before. Here you will need another free proportional encoder like a slider or something else on your transmitter. The Wingstep Easy Control has a very easy setup. If you can program your transmitter and you are able to use a smartphone, this will be the right choice for you. I also recommend you for all of you who have no experience to start with the Wingstep Easy Control software. At the classic version, the model is nearly complete programmed on the Wingstep software. That means your servo zero points, your endpoints, your expo and flight modes are all programmed at the Wingstep software. Here you will need another two free channels on your transmitter. One channel is a free proportional encoder like a slider and another channel is a free point switch. And notice, with the use of the Wingstabby Classic version, you will also need a free model memory on your transmitter. That means the Wingstabby Classic version has a much more complex setup and I really rec recommend it for people who like to do a perfect setup for their own and also for people who like to test with the different parameters of the Wingstar B classic version. But the quality of the Wingstar B control is always the same, independent of you use the easy control version or the classic version. Let's go to the basics of the flight control. The first mode of the Wingstar B is always the damping mode. It also always should be your first choice. Damping mode is to compensate bad or negative influences like wind and turbulences. But the flight characteristics are always stay the same. You can imagine the damping mode as a switch for turning off the wind. To show you the effects of the damping mode, I put it my multiplex fun cup and she to show you this. That means if you have a lock on the rudder, I turned the gain high to show you this. That means if there's an influence like the wind, the rudder switches to an endpoint and after this it switches back to the zero point. The heading hold mode has an influence at your flight attitude. The heading hold mode is a permanent control. That means it controls not just influences like wind or turbulences, it controls also the flight attitude. If you put your aircraft to a negative flight, it won't change the direction or attitude until you do something with your sticks. Let's have a look on the rudder. Here you see that heading hold mode controls it until you get back to the zero position. Same things to the ALO ones. Compared to damping mode, the heading hold mode will change your flight feelings because it has influences to the flight characteristics. If you are asking yourself now if it's possible to combine the advantages of the two modes, please check out the next pass. Now we have looked at the two software types. The Fun Cup really flies also very good without a wing stabby. Now we have learned what the differences between the damping mode and the heading hold is. But why do I have to set the gain on a gyro system? Imagine we are just flying around with our aircraft at our local airfield. Turbulences can always come. In this case, a wind from down pushes the aircraft high in the air. At this point, our gyro system starts to work. At the first case, our gain is too low. That means the aircraft is still pushed up high in the air. We have to increase our gain until the regulation is high enough and the aircraft is not pushed up high in the air anymore. A very critical case we have 
If the gain is too high, the regulation starts to swing. This is a really dangerous condition. That means you should decrease your gain until it stops to swinging. This was a very, very basic explanation of the function of the ring stubby. But I hope it helped you to learn how ring stubby works. Okay, so now so we are cool. finished with the basics of the ring stubby. I hope you really liked it and please check out the next two parts on the Multiplex YouTube channel where we do a really detailed explanation of the Ring Stubby and see you next time. Bye!